as far as, hang on just a second, we have a room full. We have a couple of board members, um, staff, uh, a lot of public, um, and a couple of contractors as well. start the meeting. We are back from recess. Uh, before we get started, while we're made, waiting for our 1045, um, I am just going to um, publicly apologize for my behavior earlier. Um, we have, we are a commission of three. We do not have an administrative assistant or secretary, so that work is done by the three of us on an equal basis. So it, it's supposed to be done by the three of us on an equal basis. So um, with that said, uh, we will go ahead and have our 1045 appointment. Mike Myers, Building Supervisor, Search and Rescue, Weed Extension, Building Project, Plans, Bid, Discussion, and Decision. Scott, and yeah, I think you're the only staff. Do you want to come up? Do you, you guys, the board members, also want to come up? Or do you guys want to listen from there? It's totally up to you. We can listen from there. We can All right. We can all right, the floor is yours, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I went through everything and talked to all the different contractors. Um, comes out to per, per square foot for being a post. Up, Mike. For a post frame per square foot, it's twenty-two dollars a square foot. Modular is approximately eighty dollars a square foot. If you stick frame it. Um, for the barn is $93 a square foot and the offices are $136 a square foot. Um, I made some cuts on this, went through them all. What's, what is more workable in heated space, non-heated space, the modular in the building, and I cut it back to where the uh, budget should be right around $400,000 or a little less to do the whole project. Um, on the electrical, you got two bids on electrical, um, but they're both within $500 of each other. Uh, after you break them down, um, we do have a working relationship with um, Light Electric, but I do like, uh, I could go either way on that one. Um, so that doesn't, it doesn't matter to me on the electrical. We just have a working relationship with light. But with um, Townsend Electric, they're fine too. I've worked with them before in the beginning. On the buildings, um, they're pretty much basically the same, except for one aspect. H&H &H has a good building and so does Montana Post Frame. The only thing is the, is the posts. The H&H &H has post protectors that go in the ground. We do have wetlands down there. And Montana post frame does not. There's is concrete with steel posts that go in the ground. So there's the chances of rotting or any problems are almost non-existent. So that in that aspect, I would probably um, recommend Montana post frame over that, over H&H. &H. And on the modular was Palmer, I would recommend. They've been the most informative, they're the most affordable, and I like their building. That's pretty much it. All right. Franklin, you have any questions? How, how was you able to cut 160000 from the bids? You take away all the heat, take away a lot of the heating space. You take away about 20 feet. You partition walls in there so that they can heat only the areas that they need to heat. Um, by doing that, you cut a lot of, you cut concrete, cut, you cut a lot of the building. Uh, most of all, it was, we were adding up everything for insulation of the whole entire building. And I feel that, that 
we should insulate only the areas that need to be heated, leave the other areas, and if that and if when when and if the other departments want to expand, we leave it so that they can expand with their own budget. That's all, and also room for expansion over the years. So we position the building so it can be expanded. They can add on to it when they need to with more budget. That's how I came up with that. have to get electrical engineering taken care of and I have that figured into 400,000 just so that they're listed on what we do for that's mostly for uh, submitting permits thank you Father. so pretty much the next step is just basically Choosing the, I already choose them, but it's up to you guys to choose the contractors and um, approve the budget for it. That's pretty much where we have at at this point, and then move forward. Back on the electrical mic, um, we had the two light electric and Townsend Electric. Yep. The engineering um, is, of course, in the total price, but will there be any change orders, and was that addressed by either company? There will always be change orders and everything, but mostly the engineering is for, um, they both had stuff that would pass for going into commercial, so that, that part of it's fine. It's the engineering we need to have for submitting for the permits. Of being a commercial health. Okay. Did you get any kind of a, a quote on what the change orders would be? No. Okay. And it's pretty much what we change what we want. If we want to change it. Even if we even if we want to change something. So an apples to apples comparison between the two, what would be their their big totals? It's about five hundred dollar difference. Okay. When you break them down, one guy had the service boot, one guy didn't. Um, you know, it's kind of, I asked them both for the same thing, they didn't, but that's irrelevant. But I broke it down and figured out that probably about a $500 difference between the two bids. Which one would be least expensive? Towns of Electric. And you don't have a preference, or would you suggest one over the other? The only reason why I suggest light a little bit more than Townsend is because we have a working relationship. He does come here and do a lot of our little repairs that we need or anything that happens he comes that we cannot do. But I, I don't mind, I like Doug at Townsend Electric, so I don't have a preference either way. I think they're both workable. Do you see any difference between the two on the number of change orders based on the preliminary bids? I don't know. I don't know so much about Towns Electric. I know that Light probably going to have less just by working with them. Um, I don't know Towns Electric that, uh, that well to know what he does at the building process. I know some builders do, some builders don't. So I don't know if he did it super light to try to make sure he gets it to, to have the change order. So I can't really tell you that. I'll, I'll pay him for 100% sure. Now you're just talking the storage building, right? Storage and the modular. Would we have to prepare the site? Yeah, I have that figured in. So the 400000 is all-encompassing? Yes. It's the concrete, it's the permits, it's the whole thing. All right. So as far as the electrical, any more questions from the board for Mike? I don't believe I, 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 mean. I guess the main thing is that <clears throat> what all is on these uh, specs and uh, anything has to be engineered. What about the, on these on the on the building? They're already. Is that Franklin? I can't hear you. 
if the, uh, the engineering on this building? The engineering is taken care of for the office buildings from the modular. They take care of all the engineering for that so that we can meet the state specs. Um, Montana Post Frame or H&H, &H, they supply the engineering. They have an engineer that they work with to supply the engineering. <coughs> All right, any questions from the public or anyone else with any? Are you solely electrical or on the, on the building? At this point, just the electrical. The, the, like I had stated in October, the reasoning behind all the specs on everything is to eliminate change orders. And you guys are opening the door wide open on that. I couldn't give you guys a bid because I had nothing in front of me. I'm not going to give you a, a half bid on something. The two prices that you got from Drew and Doug, I am very surprised that they were that close together. <coughs> Without a spec, the door door's wide open for change orders. It, I mean, it's huge. You could end up, end up with thousands of dollars with change orders on it. Um, and I guess that's that's up to you guys as far as that end of it goes. The engineering on the electrical, there's no engineering needed on the electrical. It's preference. To pull electrical permit on a commercial job, you have to have a commercial building permit from the state. That's all you need. The engineering can be done by Drew and or Doug on their own electrical stuff. But by having specs on it, you, you eliminate all the change orders, you'll eliminate any questions, um, you know, the wiring methods used, that plays a big in a commercial building. This guy may be doing it this way, this guy may be doing it that way. You're gonna come up with two different ways of wiring a building. Uh, you're gonna come up with two different numbers. I, I don't know why this is being pushed as fast as it is. I think, uh, I think you guys are gonna end up with a building that's subpar. Why why build a building just to this to to, to to today? Why not build it for the future? And by doing that, you have to have specs. And and I'm not I'm not here because I'm I didn't bid it. I'm here because I'm a taxpayer in the county. I would prefer everything be covered on this instead of just trying to ramrod it through and put personal preference on who should be doing the work. It's not, uh, I guess two numbers is not fair, as fair as it would be if there was five numbers. We always try and get three, yes. which is rule of thumb. Yep. Um, I, I will let you know, Kiv, just so that everybody knows, this is a process and a project that's been in the works for over two years. Yep. So we're not ramrodding through or rushing anything. Uh, what we, we got into a situation of was trying to um, deal with agendas, and this was the best way we could find to try and appease everybody involved. Um, we do have an engineer that's working on this, that's been working on it with Mike. So every step has been vetted, uh, not only through legal, but through engineering. No, it is an optimum. Um, because of the situation this county unfortunately found itself in, not able to just do the job without agendas. Um, and, and we are planning for the future. That's, that's a huge part of what we've done, is not only look at the needs of today, but how do we address the needs for 10, 20, 50 years from now. Um, so with that, Mike, um, I'm going to also ask you to address any of those that, that I've missed, but is this something where once we make the decision on the whole barn buildings, the storage buildings, or the modular um, versus stick build, mm -hmm. that we can then produce those specs with the, change the changes that you've already suggested um, and put it re or re put it out to bid for those things like electrical? I'd have to check. I think so. I mean, we've already put it up to bid for once, but I'd have to check. 
Well, I'm sure you can. I mean, you can do anything you want. So that's something we can look at once we yeah. make the, the yeah. decision on how to go construction-wise. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, a lot of it was you guys asked me for a price comparison and what I could what I could do to make a budget, and that's what I've done. And who I recommend and who I who I had to work with to recommend. That's what you guys asked for, so that's what I've done. And I know we could work within this budget. Did did either either one of them like spec what they were using and yeah and uh, fixture numbers and all that other stuff yeah and what is it I have to look it up is it all Romex I have to look it up I think so I can't remember there's a lot of things I have going on but I can sit with you and show you. So based on what uh, Kiv has suggested, what is your recommendation? That we go ahead and choose from one of these, or we table it and come back to it? Um, what would be your advice as the expert on this? Well, I say let's table it and talk about it a little bit, on, and then come back to it. And okay. Come back to it next Monday. All right. Well, I, I think we should table it for now, and I think we should. Mike say? Mike suggested, Elaine, that we go ahead and table this portion until next Monday and talk about it a little bit more, and that way we can go ahead and move on to the other two okay. so we know more concretely what we're talking about. I well, think it's just how you need to right? explain Mike's past. I need to ask if we can, if we can resubmit and, and go from there. So I'm going to make sure it's legally... I'm not going to open my mouth until I know legally what we can do. And we want to keep things separate between the storage building and the other, that modular. For one thing, you're talking about emergency services down there, <coughs> and I had a couple of calls on that. Well, we already talked about it. And that, well, I'm going to bring this out anyway. For that location, for any kind of emergency services, it's the poorest place you can have it, because if there is a, a flood or a chemical spill from the trains, anything like that, that end of the town is what's always evacuated. Well, I'm going to tell you, we've already talked about it, Brenda and I and Nick, that anywhere in this town would not work. With well, fairgrounds, whatever, the only place that would work would be on the other side of the bridge. Because if a, if a flood happened, if a dam broke, both your bridges are going. You guys are cut off from Bozeman and from Helena, and the only place to put a command center would be out on the other side of the freeway. Going back on that. I think the fairgrounds would still be there. You can't get to the fairgrounds, you're air back and everything in and out. You're right at the airport. Still air backing. It's a lot easier for coming in from Helena. You got you're gonna have FEMA come in here when you have something like that happen. Uh, Brenda and Nick and I talked a lot about this. That it's really not feasible for anywhere on this side of the freeway. Did you guys discuss to the airport? I mean it's too yeah. small for major aircraft. The the problem well the problem is, is mostly is is, is accessibility okay. if you're going to do something like that like if, if there was ever something like that it's the other the most feasible place would be on the other <coughs> side of the bridge. Hmm. Interesting. And they would know, of course, sheriff and and Nick. What would um, that comment? Basically, Mike has already spoken with uh, Sheriff Ludwig and Nick Korthals about the most optimum place to put a command center in the event of a local emergency. And both agreed, uh, and sounds are pretty adamant, that the best location would be outside of town, north of the bridge. Reason being, and we know this from the Hebkins uh, tabletop that we did, if uh, something like Hebkin blew or there was a, a major earthquake, we could lose the bridge, both bridges coming into town, and then Townsend's cut off. Um, the airport isn't big enough to handle, um, you know, uh, the kind of air support that a whole town would need, so your command center would need to be north of the bridge. Did I get that right, Mike? Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's, there's options there, uh, several of them. Um, and Nick is, or uh, Wynn has brought forward some issues and, and ideas too. But that's not the, the issue for today anyway. Um, other the DES than should be involved in it too. Yeah, they, they have been. Um, we've talked with Mike about this. Um, 
and, and that's probably the reason this would not be a good command center, however, still could be a DES training center. Um, but we've kind of gotten off topic a little bit, because I think command center is, is probably for another, I think another the big, discussion. The biggest thing is in the modular is mostly for the training room. It's for the training room for the search and rescue, it's training room for the ambulance people, it's training room for everybody, because they're going to probably end up tearing down this building pretty soon. There's a lot of tra training opportunities over there that if you've got it, we don't have a place here. We got the 4-H building out at the fairgrounds. This is handle any kind of training that would be needed. Okay. And there, you know. Okay, so moving along then, the buildings, um, let's talk about the storage building. Um, we have two bids, H&H uh, &H and Montana Post Frame. You suggest Montana Post Frame because of the posts and the fact that it is a wetland wet, yeah um any thoughts any questions on that frank what's, the, what's the total figure on that post frame building total figure, when you cut it back it's going to be uh, about a hundred hundred thousand and what's the size on it it's going to be end up being a still 60 feet wide it's going to be 80 feet long by 60 feet it's mostly they had so many doors cut in there. Five thousand dollars a door, approximately. And as you know, another thing I look at where you just talk about storage for some vehicles through the winter. You can. I, I talked to McCall. He's got the building down there. He rents a bay out for probably one hundred and twenty-five a month that is store two vehicles. Mm -hmm. Worst, No, this would be um, on the 17 acres of county property. So across the road, east, uh, west, across the road west. Um, so. I think if, if we're going to talk about the storage of just two vehicles, um, I'm not sure why that would be relevant. Search and rescue, do you know how many vehicles that they have that they're looking at? Not possible. I, I feel like we're kind of going way backwards on we this. Are, Again, this is two years worth. Um, Mosquito has a, a number of vehicles. Weed has a number of vehicles and equipment. Um, so. Okay, so with that, um, any further questions on the uh, storage building? And of course, this would handle the chemical issues as well that right now are out of compliance. They're um, not out of compliance. And I don't think there's, last I knew, there's nothing in there for the chemical building. The chemical building. Chemical storage. Mm -hmm. We had discussed maybe. You got the best chemical storage you could have right now with that cargo. Right now, honestly, no. The list of possibilities outweighed the the function. Of what, what's that? That, um, that, from, the, that? When I submitted that deal to you last year, that was just having the Department of Ag inspector come in and look and tell me. He, he wasn't looking for violations. He wasn't there to write violations or to do an actual inspection. That was kind of me doing an audit just so I could do preventative. Um, but Right now, he said that if he was doing a true inspection, he said that there would probably be about five or six violations that he would write. One would be ground contamination of both the washout site and the storage site because that storage unit only has a wood floor. He said almost anything that was dropped in there would go automatically go through the bottom of the floor and be into the ground. And he said, uh, uh, he, he told us that we squeak by, but that's it. And that and that's, that's pretty simple. Sure Once you find the spots you want to, just like you do on farm storage or other storage, <coughs> you put a wall retaining wall around, put a concrete slab, and set that in there, and it's it's taken care of. The only thing I can see that that needs down there is a maybe a little more on the, on the electrical. A good uh, two breakers in there for those heaters. So if one heater doesn't uh, goes off, then the other one would, would take over. 
Well, that's, you can't have anything that's any better. It's at all a complete metal building well, and a strong metal building. You know, you'd have to you'd have to do some kind of pouring. You'd have to do some kind of pouring. The other thing that's an issue in there too is space. I mean, right now, you know, properly you should have each one of them areas, each one of them chemicals marked off, so that if in case of an emergency, if the emergency personnel has to access that. They don't come in there and grab something they think is just a, a, a herbicide and it be some kind of mosquito, you know, something that could be cause hazards. Technically, you're supposed to have each one of them areas placarded so they know exactly what chemicals are in there. Um, that's another issue that we have. That building, when it was purchased, whenever, was never meant to be a long-term storage unit. It was meant to solve the issues to be a short-term unit back then. You know, the, the heaters that you're talking about, that is the only thing. There is one heater in there that runs that whole thing. If something were to go out on that, that heat would be done. That's exactly what I said. It should have another backup one in there. It should have, yeah. When you heat that whole storage unit with one of those little heaters like that, that shows that it's pretty darn good. It is good that way. The, the, there's a lot of issues with it though right now. Um, oh, okay. Can, can you keep different chemicals uh, all in the same area? Yes, but technically you're supposed to make sure that they have spill protection and like I say, depending on what the chemicals are, you're supposed to have each, each one kind of a placard so that they know where it is so it's clearly labeled. Um, that was one of the issues that they said was safety issues and things is if the wrong person were to go in there and not know what was going on and this has happened around the you know around the state more than once but they go in say the mosquito stuff is in with the weed stuff a personnel comes in and it's not properly placarded it's four o'clock in the morning they go to load their equipment they grab mosquito stuff instead of weeds for stuff and they go out and then you have a misuse of chemicals. Okay, so, <clears throat> and letting you know this, um, again, this has been a two-year process. We have reports, we have written documentation, we have pictures on all this. Um, there's, there's a different school of thought. Some people think a space heater um, and a container are appropriate for chemical storage. Others are concerned over Department of Ag and five or six noticeable violations. Uh, do we address those or do we wait until we have a disaster and then uh, react to that? Um, part of this project is, does it, is addressing something before there's a disaster, especially since it's on record now multiple times that we are aware of the violations and as, as of yet have not done anything to address There wasn't any violations. Them. Okay, and, and your opinion is fine, Franklin. Um, so, with that, um, are there any more questions about the two buildings uh, between the two? Uh, does anyone want to make a motion that we go ahead and move forward with either H and H or Montana Coast Frame? <coughs> Cost about hundred thousand dollars for a sixty by eighty, with the ability to add on as needed. By 80 cover what we need right now? Yes. Will it give us relief? <coughs> yes. Can, can I make a comment before you make a motion here? Yes. What would be in that? Hang on. Uh, that would be search and rescue, uh, which is, uh, again, you know the history there, um, weed and mosquito. Well, search and rescue. No, not. This is just the storage, the vehicle storage building. Okay. <clears throat> so it's just equipment and vehicles. That's it. And chemicals. The chemicals going to be on the side, right? Chemical will be. Yeah. Um, but attached. Yeah. Um, so hang on just a second. We do have one question from the floor, Mike. You know, uh, I'm on the fire board, and we just went through the same process of building a building in Winston. I mean, we went to the state. They threw all this stuff right out the window. Number one, if you're going to build in a swamp, 
they're going to make you go in and take soil samples. And you're not going to pass a soil sample, and you're probably not going to pass a state building code with a pole barn in a swamp. And then you're going to, what kind of equipment are you going to put in here? Because then we have to, we have had to excavate that thing an extra 20 inches, and then we have to come back and compact all of that soil to 95%. And another thing is, are you paying prevailing wage on this? Because you're required to pay prevailing wage no matter how you do this, once you go over $50,000. Well, one, we're out, of the, we're out of the wetland, or the small portion that's not it, do, it, it doesn't have to be wetlands. It um, has to be compactable, solid soil. And we, we're still fighting okay. with them on the content of the, the concrete. They want 4,500 PSI concrete. Yeah. And the normal building code is 4,000. And that's what the state's going to require. And another thing is, when we went in there, I drew plans. They had to take my plans to, a, to an architect and a designer before the state would even approve them. So you're going to have to have an architect stamp. You're going to have to have a designer. You're going to have to have soil samples. And, and you're going to have to pay prevailing wage. We know that. Yeah. They went through, the fire district, as you know, went through that with Dead Creek, too. Um, these things that seem so simple become convoluted. But Mike, would you address each of those issues uh, for us so that we all are back on track? Well, Sean's looked at the site, the engineer, so he know that he he would know if it's in the floodplain or not. We're right next to it. Um, we do have prevailing wages in all the bids. We did specify that. So the county engineer is also the uh, floodplain coordinator. So we've got that covered by working with Sean Higley on this as well. So do, you, do, you, do you have, have you had a soils engineer look at the ground yet? He's done all the evaluation that he needs to at this point. Um, and again, he's the county engineer. So... Um, the county engineer is not an architect and he's not... No, these guys have a stamp <laughs> on this, but they yep. don't have a state stamp on these bowl barns. And that's what we were going to do out there and he, they wouldn't let us do it. Yeah, and, and we can certainly double check these things, but um, Mike has, has done hours and hours and hours of phone calls with the state, with Sean. Do you want to add anything to that, Mike? No. Um, so it's, it's one of those we can certainly double check, but really at this point I can't think of a, a rock that's you know, not been turned the over. The other question I have is as a member of the Parks Board is we were promised Parks land down there on that piece of property. Where is, are we adjacent, or where are we? I've worked with Nicole. And so it's, you're aware of that parks yeah. going in there? Yeah. In fact, Parks and Rec said they'd write a letter of support for this project. So thank you for that. I don't remember doing that. <clears throat> um, I don't know that you were at that meeting. It was maybe two months ago. You guys um, have we haven't had a meeting since about September. Maybe you guys have to move it, move it from where you guys were going to put it. Because you guys weren't, because you guys had it underneath the uh, power lines too close. Yeah. yeah. And they can't move that power line. No. That's the main line to Winston. We did look at that. Yeah. It would be nice to be able to do it. It makes the land a little bit more usable. Um, but it is in the floodplain portion anyway. Yeah. But yeah, we have been working with Nicole on this. Um, so, any other questions on this? Do uh, do either of you want to make a motion uh, to move forward on this, or do you have any other questions or thoughts? I'm having a hard time hearing some of this stuff. I would like to wait until Monday so I can check out some of the stuff that's been said because I can't hear everything. Okay. Do you want a recap of what Mike's questions and Mike's answers were? Yes. Uh, Mike Delger asked about uh, the swamp. And flood plan, uh, the swamp being in a swamp, and, and uh, parallel paralleled that to what the fire district has gone through um, with trying to add on at Winston. Um, the state has had no, numerous hoops, of course, for the fire district and any entity to jump through, and we have to pay prevailing wage. Um, Mike Myers uh, mentioned that we have worked on this again for two years with the county engineer. Uh, who's also the floodplain coordinator, we've been working with Parks and Rec on where they want their facility at, and prevailing wage is in the bids already. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Just do one table until Monday. 
or do you want to? Um, what's that? I didn't say, it, but I think we should wait till Monday. Let me make one phone call, and then I'll let you know on Monday. All right. So, Frank, I think we should. I think Mike agreed to table until Monday. He'd like to make one more phone call. Is that good with you? I'm fine with that. Okay. I think we should wait later because I suggest that uh, if we're going to press farther. Uh, if it's Montana Post Polls at the lower bid, they come in here, we visit with them, and we get a concrete price what it's going to be. And also, if, if we're going with it, at least that will give us, we know exactly where we're at. And then we can decide whether we want to go with it or not on the storage building. How do we know All right, right now? I feel like I've just been spinning my wheels anyways on this, so. Oh, we've got, yeah, I know. We've been wasting a lot of county money as far as extension has been in a temporary uh, facility, search and rescues in a facility that doesn't work in the winter time because the doors freeze shut. Um, you know, we've got some big issues. Um, so, all right, moving on to the modular. The modular, modular is not like an old-fashioned trailer. Can you give everybody an update as to what we're looking at the, mo at the modular, why it was brought up, um, and some of the details that I think people don't understand at this point or aren't aware of? Well, it's a, a lot of counties do it because it's more of an affordable building. Um, it's a building that you can add on to later if you need to. Um, you, I mean, it's just a, it's just a nice way to go all in. Jefferson County does it, Lewis and Clark County do it, do it. A lot of schools do it for their classrooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just uh, it's just a simpler way to go. And can you give us the quotes again from uh, the two, or the one that you suggest, so we have the uh, dollar amount? It was 170000 and that was engineering and all the shipping. One hundred and seventy thousand round number, and satellite was two hundred and one thousand round number. What is the difference between the two? None. None that I can find. I called both of them, gave them the list, they, the list, exact same list of what we needed and what we wanted, and it has electrical, it has the ADA bathrooms, showers. Um, it has a lab, I think it's four offices or five offices, I can't remember it right offhand. Um, a meeting room, HVAC system, the whole thing is just one unit, come in, and that's it. You hook it up, hook up the plumbing, you hook up the power, and it's done. The other thing is, is this modular building will provide the shower facility that we need for our chemical sprayers. Um, it will provide the training room that we need for search and rescue, EMT, uh, and law enforcement. It will provide a meeting room uh, that we need for community uh, meetings or committee meetings that we have uh, from around the state. It will also service um, sanitation, extension, weed, mosquito, um, and I'm sure I'm missing some more there. When it's it's not for a single department. You could also run out the space, the meeting room space too. No, that's true. We're running out in this community. So I don't um, think we're running out. We've got some several good ones. One that's uh, quite available, and it's, if you want something for a big doing, is uh, Watsons have quite a building out there now. No, they get everything set up in that. So. Uh, and as far as any meetings that uh, we have and stuff, if we can't handle the courthouse, I can say that I'm sure they got the 4-H building to handle anything I can possibly think of. We got the, the library, that's where most of the meetings are held. So, um... Thirty-six by sixty. So on that one, um, Mike, 
uh, or Elaine, any any further comments or questions? Uh, do you want to go ahead and move to go with one of the companies at this point? Um, so that we can go ahead and, of course, nothing's going to happen probably till April, but we still need to confirm and, and lock in these prices. Um, any, any further questions, uh, comments, or do we want to go ahead and uh, vote on either one, Mike's suggestion or other? I think we should wait till Monday and vote on a, on a budget that we're going to do and the whole project all at once if we're going to do this. <coughs> And does that, what's that? Okay. We still gonna have to meet with, if we decide to go with, say, one contract, well, I say, I'm using Post and Poll, for example, or <coughs> we're gonna meet with them. We need to concrete stuff. There's talking about around this, around that. That's, most contractors know when they start saying around what that can be. I've talked to them a lot. Yeah, but we don't have it in writing. Because that made changes. We do have concrete bids. That's what we looked at a couple weeks ago um, as the commission in a public meeting. So, okay. So, at this point, um, Mike, you're going to make a couple more phone calls just to answer some of the additional questions, um, reiterate uh, some of the, um, the information that we have. Um, we'll go ahead and um, determine budget questions and um, money spent to this point. How's that? Am I missing anything from the board? Um, we need to evaluate how much money is being wasted also by spinning our wheels. We either need to decide we are not going to do anything um, or that we are actually going to address some issues. Um, yeah, it's this, this, um, you know, well, it's, you know, two years, so we'll, we'll come together on Monday, uh, and address this as we have time during the agenda, because this is a tabled, um, subject. We can go ahead and take care of that then. Any further questions from the public? Yes. Um, on the, the cost of the modular, like, I assume that the insurance to get that from, I think it's Colorado or somewhere up to here, that's in the price? Yeah. They handle all the shipping and insurance. Okay, that's good. Well, Nick, back to the fellow up there, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, the gray butchers there. His idea of getting all the particulars really down is an awful good idea. You just, you know, without a plan, you're just cutting your own throat. Mm -hmm. Wide open to have anybody say, Oh, well, you forgot this, and just did just rise the cost. I researched it enough, I researched it enough, I know the plan. It's, it's, I'd like know. to have some real plans put down where other people can look at them and say, Yeah, as far as spinning wheels, it's better to take a little extra time and do it right than to get yourself in a huge bind that we cannot get out of. And you're 100% right. So One I'm of really the things. Favorite, I, a piece that's, that's a huge piece of this puzzle that I think you guys need to be aware of is we've looked at a couple of different options. We've looked at a lot of different options. Stick built was one, and this modular yeah. is another. The modular is something like Mike said is done by numerous other counties. They're a lot better built than they used yeah. to be, et cetera, et cetera. So because of the cost savings, we were kind of focusing on that as a working group putting this together in the first place. Well, then we got pushed back and, and you know, we don't need any changes. Um, and so in order to try and address those, those issues, what we did is we said, okay, let's just get a rough what's the difference that we have in concrete. Is the modular the best way to go financially or is it better to go stick with it? And that's why we put out the bids that we did. We're not going to do the engineering for a stick build because we already know from studies that it's a lot less, a lot more expensive than the modular. So we were not going to put in the county money right. to get engineering done on something that we know is already and you know 136 dollars a square foot versus 80. So that's the reason there wasn't engineering done. 
Now the modulars, if we can decide that we're going to go that route, then we can go ahead and hit the second part, and then we can go ahead and get more detailed information. And that's one of the things Mike's going to find out is, can we go ahead and rebid? But we had to at least get it solidified that the modular yeah, is indeed the better way to go. So, yeah, it is spinning our wheels, and it is taking a longer time, but you're right, it's, it's important to do it right yeah. first, and the only way to do that is to get the facts on the table again and again and again so we can address those for those right who are just opposed to the project. What's that? We've got to do it right or the county citizens are going to be the ones paying for it. Exactly. Um, exactly. One other thing that goes back to, you know, this isn't for or against anything, but you mentioned the flood, you know, that's something that kind of thought about that dam down there and what happens in this area is subject to earthquakes. Uh, since somebody's done some studies on that, are they expecting the water to come up real quick or just a wall of water to go through here? If it's a wall of water, this land down here with all those chemicals, isn't it such a hot idea? Anything can happen at any time. Has First of all, yes. Studied that? Would it be a wall of water? Or would we'll try to follow the, the, the channel down here? It, there has been extensive study on it. When Hepkin almost failed a couple years ago, what uh, DES did is they had some tabletops. Tabletops is when you bring all right, the entities I understand together. Water hydrology. Okay. Yeah. And then what we did is we went through what would happen, okay. how would the phone calls come in, what if there was a rainstorm on top of it. Yeah. And if that happens, you know, worst case is we could be under eight feet of water. So where the chemical is right now, bad idea. Well, what about down here? That would be under eight foot too. Yeah, it would. And the thing is, is an emergency can happen at any time. We could have, we could have an earthquake that would demolish the fairgrounds. We could have an earthquake or a chemical spill that would hit north of town yeah. and, you know, wipe out Winston. We can't address everything, right. so what we do is we look at the big picture and address what we can as best we can. Uh, just another thought, you know, if something happened that drastic, the National Guard would be involved, and all those Chinook helicopters would be what would bring in the supplies. It wouldn't be fixed yeah. by the aircraft. That's probably a really good point. It would yep. pretty quick, but you're right, then the airport out here could. Yeah. And they wouldn't even need the airport. You know, we had a Chinook out here on Front Street not too long ago. So it's it's one of those they can land just about anywhere. Yeah. The, the reason this is attractive out here is the county already owns the property. Yeah, it's a big deal. It is. It is. It is usable property um, to a point because a lot of it's in floodplain, but not all of it. So how do we juggle being fiscally responsible and meeting the needs not only of today, which are immediate, but also long term. And that's what we're trying to do. And, and you're right, we're trying to look at every single piece and put it into one puzzle that makes sense. Um, Kip, I think, did you have a, a comment or a question um, on handouts? It's kind of half gone, but the, the spec is more important than the engineering on all that stuff. It's, it's way more important than the engineering. By having a spec, you're specifying what you have to have in that. By having engineering, that's a that's a one-page drawing. So the, the spec is, is more important on, on the whole whole works of it all. And we can find out about that, but specs on a modular, specs on a stick belt are going to be different. Does the county put 100%. the money into something that is, you know, 50% more expensive yep. than the other option? At this point, the county said, no, it isn't worth the money. Right. So that's, well, I, that's I where we're at. I can tell you, the specs on a modular electrically is way less than the specs electrically on a stick build. The state has to approve these plans through all these modular companies with less uh, code than what we could get away with. So spec-wise, electrically, on the modulars, if you can get away with it, take it. All right, and, and we'll have more answers on that on Monday for you. Another hand up, yes. Uh, Carol Plymel, I'm just wondering, uh, do you draw out a plan and then it's available for the county personnel to see, people to see? Is it drawn out so that people can look at it? It will be when we decide what we're going to do, if we're going to move forward. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to draw out anything until I know what I'm going to do. All right. So we're, I mean, to get approval on this. But we do have a drawing of yeah, both. We do have but a drawing. They're not. We have drawings, but we just, once everything's 
decided, then we can move forward. Okay. So they're not blueprints at this point. They're drawings with measurements, yeah. that kind of thing, so that the different departments could look at it, could give their input. Yes. And do I understand that you're going to do it piece by piece, the modular, and then go to the storage? No. It's going to be all on one big plan and, and, yeah. and voted on like that? So then are you going to decide to go with it and then show the plan, or will the plan be out there prior to that? Your nobody decision. Has, nobody wants to spend any money yet besides my time um, to make a plan, to draw, have something grown up until it's decided on the green You mean you're going to decide to go ahead with the building before you draw the plan? Is that what you're saying? No, no. No, okay. there's right. been already a series of votes. This is being done in step by step by step, and it is a big project. So we're not doing the whole thing all at once and just you know shooting from the hip. We're doing it methodically from start to finish. So why is the county going to commit to spending money for blueprints if we haven't even agreed to move it forward with the project? We're going to go step by step so that we don't just waste money. We have to have an agreement of the commission and we have all the departments on board, before we are going to put the money into specs uh, for one or the other, or blueprints, engineering, PE stamps, we've got to have a commitment that we're at least moving forward th with this. So if there's piece by piece. We're not, we're not just shooting from the hip on any of this. Well, I, I, don't, I don't mean to indicate that, and, I, and I'm not being trying to be a burr under your saddle, but I'm just wondering for myself, will you build the modular and then go from there, then go to the storage? No, we'll do that. You'll have the whole plan. You have the modular on a plan, the storage on a plan, all that will be on a plan? Yeah. I'm, I'm catching you right. And we're doing the whole project at once. And it will be less expensive to marry the plumbing and the, you know, installation all into one project rather than doing two, and that's the reason for that, is to save money. Now, I understand that you have to have an architect when you do something like this so that it's up to building codes, right or wrong? And well, you have an it depends, architect. it depends on what you're doing. The Montana Post Frame is supplying everything if they go Montana Post Frame. The modular supply, the, the modular company supplies everything. So no, we don't have to have an architect. But there's an architect involved through the companies. But the county doesn't have to purchase the services of a third because it's already incorporated in the two other buildings. And then the county engineer comes in and he lay, you pay him to come in late, make sure with me or whoever and lay out everything where it needs to go and it's within the, um, building area to make sure it can pass all the permits. Okay, that's all I wanted. Thank you. Yes. On the storage building, how many overhead doors are there? I cut it from, they had like 12, and I cut it down to less than half, I think it was six, I cut it down to six. six. Of them. And that's, that's 5,000 each, that's included in the price? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, cut, the before was included in the price and I cut it down Insulated door costs about five grand. Right. Commercial insulated door. I just put one in. Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any other questions on this? All right. I think we all have our homework. We will uh, meet on this on Monday. And um, thanks for your time. Any other fat further comments? All right. It is 11.40. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much. Thanks, Elaine. I feel better. Fine,